Uh, uh, hello and welcome to Carnivore Cafe Chat number four. Number four. four. We got number Adam. Four. We got JT. Unfortunately, we don't have Jeff with us today, but he is spending some good quality family time uh, with his family, which is awesome. Uh, traveling out there in Italy right now. So how's it going with you, Adam? How's it going with you, JT? Fantastic. It's going good, man. I got no complaints here, and I'm wearing my Healing Humanity bucket hat. Make sure you guys be on the lookout for these things. They're 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 coming. <laughs> I said to JT, "What the heck is going on here? You have a healing humanity hat." Uh, it was this documentary was my idea, and I one hat in my I'm wearing a Matthews archery hat right now. <laughs> I don't know where he got this this knucklehead down here. My wife is sending him hats. I don't even have the hat yet, and she sends it to JT first. Nice. Normally I'm representing too, but I I found this shirt today. I. I had this shirt months ago, as some of you will know. I went out into the public. We had a couple conversations with individuals, and I lost it. I don't know. It got lost in the behind the washing machine or something, and now six months later, it just appeared this morning. So I'm like, I'm wearing this one. I got the bracelet on, though. We're all so. in the club, man. We're, it's a it's a club, an exclusive club. Right? You guys got to get these. We got to start, Adam. I was talking to Jen about this. She's been sending out the... Shout out Redmond Salt Shakers. Thank you guys so much for people that are purchasing these still. I don't even really advertise these anymore. We advertise these during the 24-hour live stream. And people are still buying these. We were offered them for 20 bucks. Trial size Redmond Salt Shaker. You get in a keychain so you can take it with you out to the restaurant, family, whatever. And we really appreciate it. It's kind of like just a, a way to donate for the documentary, but then you get something cool. She just sent out like eight more of these today. I'm like... Who's wow. ordering these still? So it's amazing. I'm really thankful that that's still coming through. Every penny from the profits from these goes towards the documentary. Um, but I was telling Jen, long story short, I was like, why don't we have these? We should put these out there. And I don't know if she did it or not, but I'm like, you need to figure out the postage and how that works. They're so small. I'm like, can, can we just throw in a regular envelope or what? And I'm like, she said she doesn't think so. She's going to check at the post office and verify. You can do a fir uh, first class mail package and it's it'll be like $1.50 or 2 bucks or something. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. We have to I do that. My Redmond's travel salt, every restaurant we go to, I don't use any any salt provided from a restaurant. I always just Redmond's it. See, that's because JT has his stuff together. I literally, <laughs> I in the other room, I have about 100 of these sitting there. And I mean, I don't go out to eat that much, but I'm never prepared. Every time I'm like, oh, I forgot it again. And I got to use this. Put it on your keys, man. Put it on your keys now. The problem is I got too many. I got too many kids. That's what it is. It's never my fault. So like we were just gone yesterday. We went shopping and we took Emma's car. So I didn't have my keys with me. Or I'm in jet with like I, I should just put it on every one of the kids keys is what I should Attach do. Attach it to your, uh, your pocket knife as long as you got the pocket knife. Right. Yeah. And I always have that with me. Oh, someone in the comments said we need bumper stickers. There Jill said, hello, all. I'm waiting for my shaker. When did you order it, Jill? Because Jen just sent out a whole bunch of them today. She's been pretty much on top of it. So hopefully hopefully she didn't miss yours. If she did, shoot me an email, homesteadhow at gmail.com. I'll make sure it went out to you. So what's what's new with you guys? You guys eating anything interesting lately? Any new carnivore recipes? Any Dunkin' Donuts runs from either of you? <laughs> I had that close call with the pizza, but I... I, uh, I I texted Carrie and I made some eggs and bacon. So, but uh, we, I've been looking up like a different uh, type of crust you could do for pizza. And apparently you could take egg whites and whip them and they call it like an air crust or something. It's literally just egg whites. Oh yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, I was, I was thinking about doing that because um, a, a little pizza wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad thing uh, if I could figure out how to keep it all carnivore, you know? <laughs> right. right. So you had uh, close encounters of the pizza kind, huh? Oh, the worst, the worst kind. And <laughs> I suggest to people, like, it's going to happen, you know, like, and I maybe get cravings like once or twice a month. Not much, man. I'm, I'm usually pretty dang good. But I, who knows if I didn't eat enough that morning or what that was, but it was bad. I, I was ready to hop in the car and just binge. Yeah. And garfed out a whole pizza. I felt like um, Garfield with like the lasagna, you know, like. <laughs> It's so funny because I, I had the pizza. I've only had like one craving, one really bad, intense, horrible craving. It was when I was fasting with our buddy Jeff. I was like four days in. I wasn't even hungry, but all of a sudden I was like, I want pizza so bad. It was a weird thing too. It wasn't like a hunger craving. It was just all in the brain. The brain just like pizza, pizza, pizza. Like it wanted it so bad. 
It was weird. It kind of scared me. Luckily, it went away. Hey, just I, keep uh, it real. Like, I still get cravings once in a while, but not much, though, on carnivore. And I, I've heard someone say that if you're having cravings, that that's a signal from your body that you're still hungry. And so why don't you just eat some more carnivore and then get rid of those cravings for the pizza and, and whatever else. Is right. Going on. Yeah. Emma always talks about it. Cause she, she struggled with cravings for a long time. My daughter, Emma, and she's like up the fat, eat more fat or bacon or whatever. It's like when she gets more fat, she seems like those cravings go away. Speaking of Emma and Katie's in the chat too. Shout out Katie, outdoor Katie. Uh, the whole family right now is doing carnivore. It's crazy. It's That's awesome. amazing. Jen, um, she's as you guys know, she did carnivore for a while, then she had she fell off and she's doing ketovore and she's like full on carnivore. I was just talking to Adam about this earlier. She joined Bella's steak and butter gang, the group. Um, because she's she struggled with like some meat aversion. That's her biggest issue, which is understandable because she was she's vegetarian for five years before doing this. Um, but she's getting some really good advice from them. And speaking of pizza, JT. I made breakfast pizza the other day unintentionally. I saw that with eggs and yeah, yeah. I was like egg whites too, though, and it's a real. It's a. It, I've seen a recipe on it. It looks real crispy. So it just. Um, I I made it up. Like I'm taking full credit for it. I made it up. Like I was making Emma an omelet, and the last omelet I made, instead of rolling the omelet out, it was just a flat. I'm like, oh, that looks like a pizza crust. Jeez. And after, like every morning for breakfast now, the girls were all doing carnivore gen now too. Every morning we have scrambled eggs or some sort of eggs and ground beef. And we cook up the ground beef and we put Adam's Malden sea salt on it that the whole family's addicted to. <laughs> I add some butter at the end. So I had a flat thing. It was like a nine inch pizza crust of just, it was just eggs. It was just an omelet. It was just a flat omelet and then sprinkled ground beef on it. And then two, two of the girls still do cheese. I don't do cheese. I sprinkled some cheese on it and then crumpled bacon on top of it. It looked just like a pizza. I'm like breakfast pizza. There we go. It's like a new favorite now. It's it was it was good. Like I didn't have the cheese. Nothing wrong with spicing things up on the carnivore diet, you know. Like there's there's no rules against it. Like you got to eat this a certain way. Like have fun with it, you know. Like life is short, so make make those breakfast pizzas. Let's go. Right. Uh, Is that a power pizza? Yeah, power pizza. Yeah, there you go. I got to do a video (laughs) on that. We got power bowls, power balls, the big meatballs, and now power pizza. Power pizza. Adam kind of got me hooked back on ground beef again. I know when we were filming Dr. Barry, you were pretty much just eating ground beef the whole time. Yep. I've had a lot of beef over the years, but I usually, I was always defaulting to the patties. We get the patties from Costco. So I throw a couple of those in the air fryer or on the grill. But man, the ground beef with that mold and sea salt crumble oh, yeah. on it, add some butter at the end, get it a little crusty. It's fantastic, especially with scrambled eggs. I could, I will. I not only could, but I will eat that for the rest of my life. Like every morning, I can have scrambled eggs, ground beef. It's so good. Fills me up. You get your fat content and everything. Have you guys salt, tried that those? salt is the key, man, because, uh, you know, well, I wouldn't have adding salt to it before, and it's just, I don't know, too bland, tasted too gross right. or something. But yeah. <laughs> have I you guys tried those little um, ketone pea strips? Way back in the day. Uh I tried those, and then I later got the Keto Mojo, which is the blood ketone measurement. I've heard mixed things on the pea sticks; so they could be somewhat inaccurate, but I don't, I don't know for sure. I don't I, like I, those I, in my ground beef. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they no, are delicious, though. I've been trying them now, and I, I don't know. I just wanted to see what you guys think about trying those. I, I heard the blood is obviously more accurate, but I don't have one of the Keto Mojos yet. Was it, was it coming in with decent ratings? Uh, I, I mean, I guess like w- one minute, like it, it says like, I'm, I'm like a 2.5 or 0.25 or something. And then I go up to like a four and then like a 16 and then back down to a four and then back down. I'm like, I don't know what this thing is doing. Right. Hey, if you get the keto mojo, I'd recommend it. I, they sell it on Amazon. It's cool. I sent one to Jeff. I, I, I have this, I'm probably going to get arrested. I don't know why there's gotta be something wrong with this, but I have a little smuggling ring of sending keto mojos to my friends in Canada. I'm seriously, I think I've sent out five of them now to various people. For I don't understand why, but in Canada you can't go on Amazon and order those. So, like, why? I don't get it. It's just a little blood monitor thing. But um, yeah, that's strange. I have to try the keto mojo out. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, you just a little prick on your finger. You stick it on, and it tells you your ketone level. It tells you everything. It's what Professor Seafried is really promoting. Um, you can really you get your gki number they call it it's kind of fun too because you can really see like 
I would have in the in the beginning, JT, I was just like, I'm eating meat. Like, what else can I do differently? But you can actually really swing that around depending on how much fat you're getting, depending on how much sleep you're getting, how much exercise you're getting. You can really affect that number. Jeff knows about it way more than I does, do because he uh he uses that quite a bit uh, to make sure he's nice and low where he needs to be. Okay, we got Rebecca Berry. Shout out our friend. Keto Mojo is great. Have to make sure you always do the controls to make sure it's correct. Oh, there you go. Hmm. I've been trying that out. Wait, where's everyone in the chat uh, coming from today? And have you guys eaten any pizza recently? Carnivore pizza or otherwise? We got Rick here. It's Tuesday and the duck food. And the <laughs> duck is looking for eggs. There we go. <laughs> Hey, real quick, shout out. I got to do a quick shout out. Carnivore cheer Lori. Everyone loves Lori. Adam, you've interviewed Lori. She's incredible. Oh, yeah. She said she's signing on early, so don't forget I'll be driving for part of the live stream, so I'll be listening only for a while so I can keep my eyes on the road and hands on the wheel. You want to talk about a great individual. So Lori Carnivore Cheer went on. Uh, I got to add this probably to the description, but JT and I are doing a meetup uh, in Thienesville, Wisconsin, Saturday, April 13th. And Lori, being the sweetheart that she is, she went on and purchased a ticket for somebody else. So if there's anyone oh, wow. in the chat here right now that thank wants you, to attend for free, thank you to Lori Carnivore Cheer. Um, let us know. Sh uh, shoot me an email, homesteadhow at gmail.com. And I guess whoever shoots me an email first, maybe we'll do it that way. Uh, we'll get the we'll get the free ticket. So we're charging $25 because we're renting out an entire park. So part of the money is going for the park. And then anything that's left over is going 100% towards the Healing Humanity documentary. We got a bunch of people that are already signing up. So it's exciting. It is. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Anyone else that's interested in joining us? Thienesville, Wisconsin. Carnivore Meetup, April 13th. JT's going to be there with the whole family. I'm going to be there with the whole family. 11 a.m. to 3. It's in a beautiful park. Kids are free. 100% free if you got your kids. We're just charging for adults. Um, I'll throw a link here. There's a link there in the chat. But um, thank you so much, Lori. You are incredible. And one more time, I just want to shout out. Lori's got a great YouTube channel, Carnivore Cheer. Go check her out on YouTube uh, if you haven't. She's amazing. Amazing individual. Yeah, don't sleep on that free ticket. Email Carrie. And we got a new member, Sunshine No Rain, and Andy Cole. Thank you so much awesome. for joining. Awesome. Members only live stream every Thursday, 3 p.m. Central. We do members only videos. We also got a 99 pound super sticker UK carnivore guy, a friend of the channel. Thank you so much for that. Really Very appreciate cool. it. Shout out to UK. Oh, we got a bunch of people in the chat here. Let me see here. Hey, Nurse Kim. How's it going, Nurse Kim? Awesome. Nurse Kim. Let's see. Who else we got? Oh, Adele's in there. Hey, Adele, I haven't seen you for a minute, girl. Hey, I got – my whole family must be in the chat. I didn't even realize this. Alyssa, you got to get your own YouTube channel. Alyssa's the only one out without a YouTube channel. This is my other triplet daughter, Alyssa, saying hi, Dad. Um, hello, Alyssa. She's got a Alyssa, channel right there. She just got to put up the photo when she's set. Start, right? Start we got Outdoor Katie. We got UK Carnivore Guy. The, the triplets today had their ACT tests, so um, – I'm I'm assuming they're probably their score is probably about 20% higher than it would have been because they're all eating the proper human diet right now. I'm just thriving. Oops. Uh, let's see. We got some chats here. Truck and classics, beautiful workmen, absolute inspiration. Carnivore promotes positivity and the healthy way of living. Thank you, Carrie Mann, for showing me the way of the correct way of eating. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for your nice words. Trucking, keep on trucking. That's right. Darth Carnivore. I love that one. Darth Carnivore. Carnivore meetups. Everyone seems to open carry Redmond's real stuff. <laughs> that is true. When, yeah, we did right. the, when we did the Dr. Uh, Dr. Hampton meetup in Chicago and we went to a Brazilian steakhouse afterwards, it was amazing seeing what people had in their everyday carry carnivore wise. We had Redmond's uh, different smoke salts on the table. We had people pulling sticks of butter out of their purses. We had bacon. <laughs> We had first bacon coming out. Like, it was incredible. <laughs> I bring my own in my pocket always. There you go. Let's go. Karen Harrington, another friend of the channel, carry two small salts with recall with recall the time. 
We get a lot of requests for nice. bumper stickers and window decals for healing humanity. That is a oh, there you go, Jen. Yeah. Come on, Jen. That's Jen, Jen in Will the chat. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Adam and I had some conversations earlier too about potentially getting a. This is this is a big dream. I don't know if this is going to happen, but getting a vehicle because we're we're literally traveling all around the country filming people. Rapid. And I've got a crappy minivan, and not only is my minivan breaking down, but I honestly, Adam, I don't think maybe it would. I, it would hardly fit all of the equipment we have at this point. When you count all of the lighting and everything, it would literally mm -hmm. be packed to the roof. I could just buy a trailer and wrap the trailer that you pull. Yeah, but then you worry about the weather and someone stealing it and stuff. They sell these big um, sprinter vans, like the tall vans, and man, I started. I started looking around. I just love that idea, Adam, because. I could see the Healing Humanity logo on the side of it. So we could also use it as like for meet and greets. We could go to a meet and greet and take pictures right outside of it. But then it would also secure everything. But uh, yeah. we're definitely looking into it because, you know, extrapolating out how many trips that we have to do over the course of this documentary and then figuring out how much it costs to rent a vehicle each time. Um, right. It may make more sense to just find a used one of those uh, vans and. Call it, call it a day, you know? I, yeah, I think you're right. It, probably something like 10 trips into it, it would have paid for itself. Plus, like Adam was looking into this when we're filming at Hack Your Health in Austin. They actually rent a truck you can buy that's got all the grip gear, like lighting and things like that in it. And sound. People don't realize, Adam, I don't think people realize. I'm starting to realize it after a Dr. Berry visit, how much equipment you need for one of these shoots. It is incredible to the point that they rent out trucks just for the lighting. Um so yeah, for that reason, for that reason alone, like when we did Dr. Barry, Adam had his vehicle, I had a, a minivan with me, and they were both completely packed and barely. <laughs> yeah. Like Adam had to play a game of Tetris to load his car back up afterwards. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep looking around for that because it definitely makes sense. It would actually save the documentary money versus trying to rent hey, a, do a shout out for the Healing Humanity YouTube channel because I feel like we gotta start plugging that some more. Yeah, good call. I got to start adding that more to the description. But there, uh, we got to get you guys on on our other YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. So everyone, like a lot of people, have been watching Homestead How or Carnivore Today or Poco Moonshine Family. Keep watching those. But we also have the Healing Humanity YouTube channel, and we got Instagram, and we got Facebook. We put a bunch of stuff up on there when we're filming Dr. Barry. We're trying to keep that more specific to documentary things like that, but. Um, what is it on YouTube, Adam? Healing Humanity Movie, I think. Yep. Healing, Healing Humanity, Humanity movie. movie. At Healing Humanity Movie. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in after this and make sure I have that added to each of my descriptions on YouTube. I got it on mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I added it in mine. So. Hey, another friend of the channel, Ellie. Nourishment hey, Redacted. Hey, yeah. Ellie, how's it going? Bumper stickers with the website listed. That's a good idea. Mala, I make pizza crust with ground chicken, mozzarella, and egg. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I think I've seen some YouTube videos on that process. Try whipping the the egg whites and then spreading it out real flat over over um, wax paper. The video I saw it looked crispy, so I I wanna, but I don't know. Like they, you got a, you got an egg there. How, how much is that gonna taste like crust? I don't know. I'll let you guys know. Maybe I'll make a video on it. Mm. All right, we got hello from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Carrie, I was born and raised in northern Wisconsin. Once a cheesehead, always a cheesehead. There you go. Let's go. We go got some more pizza go. cravings. Let's go. Ciao, CEO. Carrie, question Do you know if Dr. Barry commented on Oprah and her talking about the fat gene? I haven't heard Dr. Barry comment on that. I heard Dr. Westman do a video, and you're probably bringing this up because I did a video earlier today on Oprah talking about that. Um, I don't know. Have you guys heard Dr. Barry talk about Oprah and her fat gene comments? Not yet. For those that haven't seen it yet, Oprah is no longer a part of Weight Watchers after a decade representing Weight Watchers to the tune of $220 million plus dollars. She watched her weight for 10 years and said, nope, that doesn't work. And now she has her own show where she's, she's promoting uh, or influencing um, injections like Ozempic. She hasn't specifically named the one she's using, but she oh, lost yeah, a bunch great of cause. Right. Yep. And so I did a video on that this morning. And well, she was on Jimmy Kimmel, Oprah was, and she said 
some people have this fat gene. And basically, it, it really fired me up. It really made me mad. She basically said, some people just have this fat gene. And if you have it, you're just going to be fat and there's nothing you can do about it. So in other words, she's basically telling people, you're screwed. Just go eat some pizza, go to McDonald's, go to Dunkin' Donuts, and then go get a shot and just eat whatever crappy food you want because there's no hope for you. And I'm like, no, I believe the problem is you're addicted to carbs and processed food and sugar. Uh, I, I like to speak for myself. So I'm like, I was addicted to carbs, processed foods, and I was addicted to sugar. And that's why I yo-yoed. Oprah kept talking about she has this fat gene and that's why she yo-yoed so much. I was like, I think you yo-yoed because you kept losing the weight and then you tried to go back to an addiction in moderation. Had you quit cocaine or alcohol, you wouldn't moderate and do cocaine in moderation anymore. You would abstain from it forever. You decided not to. And now you're taking some medication that allows you to continue your addiction. You're just doing it a little bit less. I think it's insane. What if you had a cocaine gene, though? Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, some people have a propensity uh, to eat a lot of food. I'm like, some people have a propensity for alcohol. Right. That doesn't mean. So So should that person continue to be an alcoholic forever? Because they're like, oh, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. But they could take some medication that will yeah, lessen the effects gene. of it. Right. Well, they're going to take some Ozempic that will lessen the effects of the alcohol so they don't get quite as drunk. But then they can continue getting drunk. No, you just quit the alcohol. You abstain from alcohol. It was, if it there's was a fat gene, then yeah. there's a ribeye gene. Because I swear, you just got to eat the ribeye and you're going to activate that gene to just sprout. You know, and I wouldn't be surprised if she teams up with um, Bill Gates next for the the peanut M&M booster shot. Right, yeah. Ozempic and peanut, <laughs> peanut M&Ms. That's all you need. <laughs> hey, you got wash, the Wash it all down with an impossible burger. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, get this peanut m M&M and booster shot here. The thing that's crazy with it is it would be one thing, like Oprah did Weight Watchers for 10 years. It'd be one thing if she was using Ozempic or whatever one of these injections she's using for 10 years, and then she's talking about it. She's been using it for a very short period of time. She has such influence that literally and unfortunately, millions of people are going to be like, oh, that worked for Oprah. I'm going to do that because people are hopeless, and they, they don't know any better, and they're addicted to sugar, and they haven't heard about the proper human diet or the foods they're eating. It's just so sad because there's there are a lot of side effects and lawsuits occurring because of these uh, drugs that were meant for type 2 diabetes, but now people are just using it to lose some extra pounds. A lot of celebrities are where their stomach, they get stomach paralysis. It can lead to suicidal depression because there's a lot of tie-ins between the gut and the brain, but all of the companies are just like, it's just fine. Don't worry about it. Like, does that sound familiar? We've heard that in the past years. It's just fine. Just take it. It's okay yep. that we haven't tested it at all. Just trust us. Yep. And meanwhile, these drugs stand to literally be the most profitable drugs of all time. Because when you when you take these drugs, you don't just, oh, I want this for a month. No, you take it for a lifetime. When you take these drugs, you're prescribed to take them for a lifetime. And unfortunately, a lot of people end up taking them for a year and then they drop off of them. They gain all the weight back, but they still have the stomach paralysis and they still have depression, anxiety, and these other crazy side effects and downstream effects they never would have thought of. Yeah, this is a great example of why people need to understand that it's not against the law to lie. And you need to understand that. Um, right. It's against the law to commit perjury, but lying, yeah, it's no big deal. And I, she's either blatantly lying about the fat gene thing or... Uh, there's just money behind it or something. Right. I think there's money behind it, unfortunately. There was a clip of her on Ellen when she joined Weight Watchers and Ellen was telling her, you made $47 million in one day when she started promoting Weight Watchers. But that, that thing irritates me too because, so she promoted Weight Watchers for 10 years, but she admits after the fact it never worked for her. She just yo-yoed for 10 years and it never worked. The checks mm -hmm. work though. They, they, the, the checks, checks work, work yeah. 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 How many millions of people, millions and millions of people went on Weight Watchers and did that exact same thing because they're trying to moderate an addiction to sugar and processed foods. They're trying to moderate an escape from eating what humans are naturally intended to eat. So she said so many people going down the wrong direction to spend so much money on it. Now, a lot of those people are still, well, what? maybe I'll try this Ozempic thing now. It's just insanity. You got to think for yourself out here, you know, and, uh, Right. I, I like the evidence. You know, you can say you're on this diet or whatever diet, but just just tell people about what's actually going on instead of, you know, don't 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 sell all that other stuff. Yep. Well, that's the thing with Oprah, too. She's in her 70s. She got 220 million from 
Weight Watchers. How much more money do you need? I mean, you're in your 70s. What, what else do you need? This is it's clearly like there's so much money to be made on these things. I don't know. I just, she, I don't just, get she knows how to spend it, man. She needs a lot of it. I guess. Man. At what at what cost is that coming? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would rather uh, I'd rather leave this world knowing maybe I did some good things and didn't just go after every last penny. And yeah. anyway, back to a lighter note. Rebecca, today is my six year keto anniversary. I'm about ninety percent carnivore. Good Woo. job, Rebecca's awesome. Let's go, Rebecca. Let's go. Crypto Ranger puts Skittles on his pizza. There you go. There you go. That's oh, the way to do man. it. Bonus. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if it's just me or I'm crazy or just because I had carnivore turned around so much for me. I was in such a horrible place before, but I literally have nightmares about like accidentally eating a Skittle or a nerd <laughs> or something like that. I really, I think I would have a seizure. I'd probably be fine. Wouldn't I? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm ready to do this video on Cheerios because I absolutely despise Cheerios. I have a, I have a vendetta against Cheerios. They're choking hazards. Yeah, I think you would be fine. You would probably, for the next couple of days, mentally be back in that space. Like maybe I can just have another one. But right, yeah, you you'd be fine. Hey, we got Carnivore Kip in the chat. How's it going, buddy? What What's up, up, Kip? There we go. Let's see what else we got. We got Gone Mad in the chat. Another friend of the channel. Wow, so many people on here. Thank you so much. Doggo Unleashed, congrats on the channel growth, Carrie. You're smashing it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're almost at 200,000 subscribers. I think we'll be in like a week. But I got to shout out my buddy JT and Adam, too. They got excellent YouTube channels, Carnivore Today, and my buddy JT, Poco Moonshine Family. You are just, what, seconds away from hitting 40,000? Yeah, I got, I'm got 10 subs away, so. Oh, come on, guys. There's 200 <laughs> of you in here. What's wrong with you? Go subscribe. Poco Moonshine family, get them, get them to forty thousand. That'd be Let's awesome. Go. That's awesome. Adam, you're killing it too. I just saw you post what like a week ago. You hit uh, what was it? You hit some view number, some huge view number. Hundred thousand views. There yeah. you go. So check out Adam's channel too, Carnivore Today. Check it out today. <laughs> yes, this Carnivore Day. What? When is it? To time to do Carnivore today right that's exactly. the truth I, do you guys get that on your channels i get that sometimes where people are like you got me i'm doing this carnivore thing i'm gonna start on uh april 7th like, <laughs> i get that I, all the time oh it scares the hell out of me because i know what they're doing too you oh, know what they're doing bacon and, and eat now and they're start. like i got some junk food in the house so i'm just gonna eat some horrible food for two yeah. more weeks don't do that you're gonna end up binging and they're gonna make well, it that much water you know i don't want to i don't want to see it go to waste so yeah I mean, don't want to yeah. waste my money like it was yeah. some sort of a good investment to begin with you know right this is what i tell people i got a new friend on facebook this gentleman uh, i think he's from georgia he sent me a message on facebook and he was he's partially blind he's got all these issues he was doing so good on carnivore but then he started drinking juice He's like, I'm just eating meat, but I didn't give up the juice yet. I'm like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, it's You're either in ketosis or you're not. I mean, it's way better than what you're doing before, I guess, if you're not eating Pop-Tarts and donuts and everything. You're just eating meat and juice. That's better than before. But um, I don't know. There's always that educational component with people where I'm like, you got to understand this isn't Weight Watchers where you did really good and you can have some juice. That'll kick you out of ketosis. It could take you a week to get back into ketosis. It's like you're either in or you're out. But I was saying to him, He's like, I, I just got a little bit of junk food left. I don't want to waste it. And I was like, well, actually, uh, my I was always taught not to waste food either. That stuff, that's not food. So you're not wasting it. Chuck it. <laughs> Throw it in the trash. It's going to end up in the toilet anyways because it's all a waste. It's just going to go right through your system. Your body's going to take all the bad stuff out of it, and it's going to cause issues and inflammation for you. And it's going to go right down the toilet anyway. Yep. It's not food. It's waste. Love it. Love if it's it. meat, you don't throw out meat. You don't throw out eggs. You don't throw out beef, butter, bacon, eggs because that's food. But I throw it right down the hatch. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. We got 20 Homestead Howe memberships gifted by Gone wow. Mad. Wow. Gone Thank you again. so much. Let's go. Awesome. That is incredible. So, I, I, again, Adam's my technology guy. I keep telling him. I'm like turning into my dad. How does this work? What does this go? So now people just, they got to go on my channel, hit join, right? And they're good from him. Is that how it works? 
No, it, no, it automatically it'll automatically gift those twenty memberships to people at random. Oh, so people, so twenty people right now it, that are members that aren't subscribed, they're gonna just get an email from YouTube and they're like, "You're yeah. in." Go to your YouTube right now and then look in the chat and it'll show you everybody that just got gifted. Oh, okay. Yep, and not anybody with a green, uh, their names are green. Those are all the subscribers. Nice. The, uh, uh, the members. Sorry. That is so generous of you, gone man. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, we've been doing a lot more for members too. I really appreciate all the members. I um, we did a couple members only videos with Dr. Barry. I've been doing some members only posts. We do the members only live stream. And if you're a member, you can always just email me. You put member in the subject, and I will answer it. Um, so thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Oh, Jen's on the chat. Wow, everyone's on the chat. Oh, uh, by the way, guys, you look so great, so happy, so healthy and happy. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Jen is on day four of carnivore. Let's go. Strict carnivore. That's and awesome. JT, your wife you, is Anna. a big inspiration for Jen as well because she's absolutely killing it. Anna, shout out yeah, Anna. Yeah, Anna, she's she's how's she doing? Jen. How's she doing, JT? Give us an update. Oh, she's at least last time I checked, it was at 113 pounds down, probably more now. Wow. Dude, that's amazing. She's constantly going back in her drawers and throwing out clothes that don't fit anymore. And just, it, you know, just keeps them, buy some new stuff from Goodwill. Then that stuff is thrown out the next week because she doesn't even fit that anymore. So <laughs> I, I every time I talk to JT, too, I mention this. Anna's got the carnivore glow. You see her on YouTube and she's just lit up. Like there's something with that carnivore zen, the carnivore glow. When you can just see it, just the happiness, the smile, it's it's awesome. But you feel good, you heal, and you and you start to get some some results on, on your body, you know, that everybody would like to be a couple pounds less, you know, mo at least most of us, you know. So um when you start to see those pounds go off, man, it, it feels good. But the it you can really appreciate it when you feel good because you've healed, you know. So uh, weight loss is cool, but the healing is the best part. I know I, I, we mentioned this a little bit before, but I gotta say it one more time. We do the bowling ball analogy. So what is that? 11, 10 pound bowling balls, roughly. Yep. That's yep. just incredible. Like we to carry that around. We we yeah. start normalizing this. JT Adam. Right? Get, you get, get some bowling balls. bowling balls and see if she can pick them up. Right. I, I was thinking about that for Bill. I can't even imagine. 500 pounds. When 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 I went to interview him, I'm like, you are literally carrying 500 pounds more than you should be right at this point. Like that's a, that's like superhero stuff. Like, how do you even do that? <laughs> like, dude, you're, when you drop all this weight, you're going to be so strong. But it's so crazy because we hear 113 pounds for Anna. And it's incredible, but it's almost not incredible because we're here. We're hearing so many stories like this. Like, that is freaking incredible, JT. Shout out, Anna. That is freaking incredible. 113 pounds. That's that's like back in the day when you'd watch one of those shows and they'd spend like a year trying to get someone to lose weight where they're doing like counting calories and exercise and stuff like that. but. I don't know. We hear so many of these amazing testimonials. Sometimes we just in one ear out the other, but. Well, that's, 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 that's the power of the proper human diet, man. Like it doesn't surprise me anymore when I hear about, you know, all these people losing weight and healing and stuff. Like, I'm just like, man, when you hear enough, you know, testimonials and you see enough uh, people, you, you're subbing to their channels and you're seeing them grow every week and, and, uh, shrinking and getting bigger, you know, like in, in, in the best ways, you're know, being optimal, whatever the optimal weight is. It, it's, it doesn't surprise you after a while. So like, not that I'm callous to it, but I'm just like, man, I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that the carnivore diet works, you know, and it works for just about anybody with almost anything, you know, right. there's a few exceptions, but carnivore is the way to go really I, I said this to bill and and to anna and to everyone jt adam like everyone that does this you got to just stop once in a while just look in the mirror and be really proud of yourself because it's it's kind of amazing especially just the fact that we're totally going against the grain of everything where oh you got to eat your vegetables breakfast is the most important meal of the day like we're doing everything the opposite so mm -hmm. it's important to take a second and really appreciate that because that's that's amazing there's one person that it doesn't work for and that's Oprah because she has the fat genes. So right. Nothing, yeah, work for that. Nothing she can do about it. I had a lot of it. fat genes and they're all gone now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How's your mom doing, JT? She's doing good too. So, you know, no no complaints from either of the girls. I don't have a, a weight update, but um, 
I'm sure she's still losing weight too. I'll I'll, let, I'll have it by uh, raise the stakes on Friday. Oh nice. Is, that that whole event, I'm like, man, that was just worth it for JT's mom. And there's one other individual that came in there. I'm not going to mention her name, but she's a local friend of the theater. Didn't know anything about keto, carnivore, depression, anxiety issues. She came up, talked to me out during the event, and then afterwards, and she's doing great right now. It's like, man, just for that alone, it was worth it. That's why I kind of like that event and that it's not just talking to carnivores. It's like anyone's anyone's welcome. Anybody who's interested, and you never know what what that feather is going to be that that tips the scale, you know. Right. We got a question from Chase. What's the best plan of action the day after a cheat day to get back into the groove fast? Just eat normally. How would you on carnivore add in a little extra fruit? Question mark. Uh, ribeye immediately. Yeah. I agree. Big fatty ribeye. I would not have any fruit. No. If I had more fruit the next day, fruit's going to convert in my body just like I would eat a Skittle. It's going to turn into glucose in my body, fructose, glucose, sugar. It's like the same thing. I'm going to be craving more food. Fatty ribeye, lots of fat. Just replace fruit with salt. Add a little extra salt, and you're going to be good. Good point. And don't beat yourself up. There we go. It's a learning experience. I love this. Someone said this before, and I stole it. It's uh, not a, it's not a failure. It's a lesson, and a lesson is a blessing. You just learn from it, and make sure you don't ever do that again. Absolutely, that's right. Don't get into the thing where oh, I could just keep doing this because then you'll just keep doing it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. and remember too it may take more than a day to get back into it um not to yeah, discourage you but the longer it takes to get into ketosis kids are they, they can snap back in it pretty quick but adults just just stay faithful you know yeah mm -hmm. vicky why i so wish there was a meet up and greet in my area one day i'll get to meet you all i'm 60 but the new me is 25 laugh out loud get that's it, awesome Vicky. Well, let us know where you are, Vicky, because Adam and I got a lot of traveling to do. So we're hoping. Yeah, Vicky, to... Vicky, you need to schedule one. Right? Then we'll come. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like we, we're gonna be down in Austin. We're gonna be down on the southeastern area of the United States, which is a big area. <laughs> uh, at some point we're gonna be over on the uh, Pacific Coast. Seattle, Washington. There's a ton of people over there, so we're going to be out New, in Eng New England, also. Yeah, and hopefully England at some point. The UK and Australia. Oh man, in South Africa, right? Graham, <laughs> carnivore transformer. Let's go. Right. <laughs> people, uh, Jen's on with her proper uh, YouTube channel now. I create crafts. What bumper stickers, window decals do you all want me to make? All funds will go to the documentary, but I'll create them myself. Healing Humanity, Jen. Adam's shirt. I don't have it on right now. Healing Humanity. I'll, we should work on that tomorrow, Jen. Let me know because I want to put some on my car. Window decal. Um, maybe, obviously, Adam has a, a horizontal design for the shirt. That'd probably be really good for a bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. I, you sent me that, right? I'm pretty sure I have yep. that one. Yeah, I'll send that to you, Jen. Let's see what else we got here. I'm always so far behind on these comments. I see you down there, DC. Good morning. Well, it's actually good evening for me, but good morning for you. Down under. Good morning. Let's go. Oh, UK Carnival guy said Dr. Beard did make a video on it. I'll have to check that oh, out. Cool. I haven't seen it yet. I saw I think Dr. Beard did a video today about the fasting study that was kind of BS that came out where they were talking about intermittent fasting being bad for you. I saw that video. I didn't see one on Oprah, but I'll have to check it out. I did a video on sheep. Uh, the benefits for raising sheep. On I caught farm. that too. The his homesteading <laughs> video. Yep. Yeah. Are you trading no. in your goats for sheep? Yeah, he had me thinking about it. You know, that's my only regret from the Dr. Barry meeting. I wish I would have talked to him more about the homesteading stuff, considering we're both kind of homesteading. Well, at least JT won't uh, miss the cocoa pebbles if uh, if you trade in for sheep because I think it's the same yeah. thing that comes out that end. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, I sure. wanted to take him to the the movie theater for the twenty four hour stream, but he said no goat pebbles. <laughs> right. Right. This might be the greatest question of all time. Seriously, because I'm stumped. Kerry, what do you hate worse, Ozempic or Cheerios? So I don't know the answer to that one. I hate them equally. Despise both of them. The reason I hate Cheerios so much is because. My one regret in life is I gave those to my kids as babies. Most people do. Um, but 
it's you look at the ingredients dr barry speaking of he did a video on cheerios too and he's like look at the ingredients you have oats oats are a starch what is starch starch is a carbohydrate it's sugar the second ingredient in cheerios is cornstarch starch again turns into sugar and the third ingredient is sugar so we're giving these kids sugar from such a young age getting them hooked on it um so for that reason it's very hard for me to say ozepic's more for adults although they're giving that to younger and younger people i hate them both i'm doing a video i'm gonna have to run it by adam and we're gonna have to get a legal team to see if i'm gonna get in trouble with the cheerios corporation because <laughs> i'm fired up on this whole cheerios thing like when yeah. you i'll stop on this right now but when you look at cheerios not only, Dr. Barry said this too, every time you eat a bowl of Cheerios, you're eating glyphosate. Now they have, three months ago, they came out with this thing that Cheerios has this pesticide in it. It's called Chlormaquat that causes fertility issues. But everyone is just like, it's the dosage that matters. We're okay taking a little bit of glyphosate. We're okay eating a little bit of pesticides that cause fertility issues. Oh, there's also forever chemicals in the packaging. We're okay with some forever chemicals. I'm not. I'm like, I'm not okay. I don't want to get yeah. any. I don't care if it's just a little bit. And then there's it's all these individuals saying, oh, this pesticide's okay. This glyphosate's okay. Uh, what about all of them in there at once? And then the thing that pisses me off so much with the Cheerios is, look at it. It is literally dog food for humans. It is highly processed. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, it's got oats in it. They're not even oats. They're pulverized. They're denatured. They heat them up so that any sort of value that, like if you ate them as God intended, the oats, okay, then there's some good stuff in there. But they've completely perverted the oats. There's nothing left good in it anymore. And then they fortify it and put vitamins in after the fact. It's like false advertising to the umph degree. You look at the front of the box, it says 11 different vitamins in it. Those are all fortified vitamins. They're not even bioavailable like they would be if you got them naturally out of the oats. Then they say, oh, it's so good for your heart as part of a heart healthy diet, which is more, it's just complete BS. They ran a study where they had people eat a low calorie. They, they, they intook way less food. They were almost fasting while also eating Cheerios. And then they attributed it all to the Cheerios, not the diet and all this other stuff they were eating. And then on top Absolutely. of it, it's sugar, sugar, sugar. So you're just getting inflamed and you're getting hooked on sugar from a young age. The thing that makes me so mad is that I was just so fooled by it. I used to be like, oh, Cheerios, heart healthy. Oh, there's vitamins in it. Oh, that's good for you. And then you pour the milk on it and the milk is pasteurized. So they've denatured, they've removed anything that was good in the milk and then they fortify it with vitamins. Processed milk with processed dog food for humans after the fact. And they tricked me into believing, yeah, this is good for you. Breakfast is such an important meal of the day. I'm going to have some Cheerios. Yeah, that's that's funny. So I got uh, three things to comment on that. So what happens if you have a glyphosate gene that allows you to not really absorb glyphosate Two, uh what what about ozempic injected cheerios um is, is that a thing or it's coming up soon right they've had yeah. every other flavor why not right <laughs> heart healthy yeah exactly it's, it's a, oh too it's perfect <laughs> oh 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 cheerio right? ozempic Oh and then, God, and then Cheerios one. taste so bad. It's made of all this stuff that basically is sugar. It tastes so bad. You have to put piles of sugar on it to make it taste good. Right? That's crazy thing. Oh, man. I could go on. We could do a whole three hours on Cheerios. You know the other thing, Adam? You're absolutely right. Everyone that eats Cheerios, myself included, before carnivore, of course, when I had Cheerios, I was always putting sugar on it. The other thing that's complete BS with Cheerios is Everything's based off the serving size. The serving size on Cheerios is a cup and a half. Nobody in the entire planet eats a cup and a half of Cheerios. They have a huge bowl. It's like it's like four X whatever the recommended serving size is. And then some people, myself included, back in the day, you'd go back and you get a second bowl, or I'll have another half a bowl because I'm trying to do good today. You're right. literally eating seven servings of Cheerios, and yeah, there's not enough sugar in it, so you got to put more sugar on it, or cut up a banana and put it on it, which is just going to break down as more sugar in your body anyway. Yeah, here's a crazy thing too. I've seen videos where they take boxes of cereal and then like crush them down and it's like the size of a baseball. <laughs> that's all that's in that box. Right? <laughs> I just saw a video yesterday. Um, I actually bought some Cheerios yesterday because I'm going to do a video on it. Uh -huh. And we bought the family size. Oh, I'm going to eat them too. No, and <laughs> we bought the family size and some guy did a video and he poured it, he compared it to the regular size. You get like you get like one bowl extra. It's such a freaking <laughs> ripoff. You get, you'd be better off buying two of the smaller boxes versus one family set. It's like you couldn't have more false advertising wrapped around a box than that. And they've convinced everyone that this is something that's good for you and healthy. 
I, I'm not even joking. I literally believe this. And I might do this in a video. I was talking to Katie about this. I'm like, we're going to go out in the garage and we're going to get some sawdust. And I'm going to eat the sawdust because I legitimately <laughs> believe that sawdust is better for you than Cheerios. I really right? believe that. At yeah. least in the sawdust, there's no sugar, which is going to cause chronic inflammation. There's yeah. no glyphosate. There's no forever chemicals in it. Just there's, fiber. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It probably tastes better too. <laughs> probably. Who likes Cheerios? It's like you said, you got to pour so much sugar over the top of them to make them even palatable because it's like eating cardboard. Yeah, when I heard you're, someone when you're else say something you're out of wood and you smell that, you know, sawdust. This actually kind of smells good. So it probably right? tastes good too. Well, then I was thinking, I was talking to Katie about this. And I'm like, why don't we take some sawdust and put it in a bowl and actually say, we're going to recreate Cheerios. All right, go get some Roundup from the garage and we'll spray that in there. And then we'll take a torch and we'll torch it so we get rid of any nutrients that were in there. And then we'll put sprinkle some glyphosate on it. And then we'll be like, here, give this to your baby. You'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? But that's exactly what's happening. It's exactly what's happening. Can anybody give Terry some Ozempic shots? Right. And <laughs> 10 to 50 of them. <laughs> Meet him in the alley out back. Yeah. I love Adam's idea, though, about Ozempic flavored Cheerios. It fits so perfectly with the O. Literally going down the Cheerios rabbit hole, too. I never realized how many different uh, types of Cheerios there were. Oh, man. And some some of they're like, oh, we add we add in real fruit. I'm like, yeah, I guess. Jen is about 50 feet away from me and three doors away, and she's telling me I need to lower my voice and chill uh -oh. out about Cheerios. <laughs> Sorry, I get fired up about Cheerios. She's got that carnivore hearing now. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, I'll stop talking about Cheerios now. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is the worst form of false advertising ever, though. Kerry, next like, thing we need on your your merch is the Healing Humanity aprons. Yeah, you get no no steak splash on, on my Healing Humanity merch. You know, right? I'm gonna be making some updates to all the shirts and stuff we have because we got quite a few shirts and people are still buying a lot of them. Again, we really appreciate it. Every penny from those goes towards the documentary. We have the Compassionate Carnivore shirts. We have this one I just found in my closet. I haven't worn this one in a long time. I eat only meat. Ask me why. This one is so much fun. If you're not uh, shy. And you like to have conversations with people, the general public about carnivore, or I like wearing this one to like family events, family reunions and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we should add some aprons. I got to get the hats going too. I've been having a lot of requests for the hats. Yep. I, got also, right uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, all the donors too. So we've been having a pretty steady influx of donors with uh, GoFundMe and, you know, we're just so appreciative of that. And, you have no idea how much how much that helps the the effort for sure. A hundred percent. We we purchased a bunch of uh, lighting equipment when we filmed Dr. Barry. We're planning this trip down south. I mentioned earlier to the southeastern part of the United States for filming. We wouldn't be doing that without the GoFundMe donations. Honestly, we wouldn't. We're still going to do the documentary. I keep saying this. It's just a matter of time. It's like it could take 10 years to do this documentary. We're gonna, it's gonna get done no matter what. But the more donations we have, the the more travel we can do, the more people we can film faster. So and you get the biggest bang for your buck. If you're like, oh, maybe I'll leave a super chat or maybe I'll buy a shirt because you want to donate. If you do the GoFundMe, that's how we clear the most money towards the documentary because unfortunately YouTube takes a big cut of those super chats. And when mm -hmm. we sell the shirts, the shirt company gets some of that. Not well, only like that, it's like a two month uh, layover with the money. So, right. I here speaking of the Oprah conversation earlier. I'm a victim, so I can't change anything to get slim. So I have to take drugs for it. Yep. <laughs> right. Drugs, drugs, drugs. That's the thing too is they're taking this Ozempic drug so they can continue to eat food that they weren't intended to eat. That drives me nuts. You're like you're not getting the nourishment, the vitamins, the minerals. There's nothing more nutritionally dense than a fatty steak. And Oprah even said this during one of her interviews. Oh, I wake up at 10 o'clock. I went downstairs to eat some apple pie. Maybe you shouldn't be eating apple pie. Now Al 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 Oprah can continue to eat the apple pie and the bagels and the junk food and not give her body the nutrients she needs. She's just going to eat less of it because her stomach's going to feel paralyzed. Instead of eating the whole pie, maybe she'll eat half of the pie. She'll lose some weight, but she's not going to get the proper nutrients. So it's going to allow mm -hmm. her to continue that addiction, eating the wrong stuff. Well, when you have a trainer and a chef, you could just blame it on the chef and blame it on the trainer. That's what's so frustrating. Could you imagine, JT, Adam, if we had our own chef? It'd be like, ribeye, or make me some carnivore pizza or anything like that. You didn't have to do it. Like You have every resource at your fingertips, and you're injecting yourself with this medication, and you have no idea the long-term consequences of it. It's just crazy. I wonder if she even really is. 
I mean, there's nothing that says that she has to be actually doing that. Right. Except cashing those checks, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Who knows? You know, she's doing that. Cashing <laughs> for sure. for yeah. Hey, it's our friend Bob, Bob Eater. Are you planning to come to North Georgia area? Uh, hmm. Georgia? Georgia? That's, Georgia? That's not, not, not soon, I don't think. We're in that vicinity, but not soon. Are you offering something, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hawks Bob. or anything or nothing? Right. <laughs> Scooby the dog, are you selling shirts and hoodies? Yes. Yes, we are. There's a link in the description for merchandise. Or if you go to healinghumanity.movie, there's a merch link there that leads to it. We, we definitely do. Have shirts Ellen. Shout out to Ellen. Hey, that's our friend Ellen. That's Ellen. Ellen's, oh. Is Ellen coming to the meetup? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure she is. It's, it's in her hometown. So nice. If any of them, she's going to come and get her picture with you. I'm sure this is the one. Awesome. So here's the meetup one more time. If anyone's interested, it's filling up, get your spot. I guess we're, we'll have a limit at some point if we get too many people, but, uh, hopefully a bunch of people will come. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get I'm going to have my camera out for YouTube. JT is going to be having his camera out, get pictures taken. We're going to listen to carnivore stories and it's going to be a blast. Cook Lots of stuff for kids to do. So, yeah, fun. Yep. Let's see. I got to get caught up on these comments here. There you go. Ellen just joined the membership. There you go, Ellen. Yep. Awesome. Yes, you'd have to read the ingredients. Cellulose is wood pulp. Apparently, it's legal here in Australia as long as they only use 4%. Cereals also use it. Oh, I didn't even know that. So, there's already some shredded cheese. Um, yep. When you know, but if you buy like shredded Mexican cheese or any any type of shredded cheese at the store, there's there's a little bit of that wood pulp in there, you know. Yep. Keep it from sticking together. Yep, gotta have it. Sandra, shout out, gone mad. Oh, she's talking about buy the shirt in a smaller size and hang where you could see it every day for an incentive. There That's you go. a good idea or inspiration. I know. I think JT, you and I have talked about this before. I made that mistake. Halfway through my carnivore journey, buying a whole bunch of new clothes, you get so excited. Yeah, I could fit in a, a large instead of an extra, extra large. And now I have a bunch of large clothes that, that I don't fit in anymore because you, when you finally get down to the goal weight, you got to do it again. Yeah, go to Goodwill. Just buy a couple pieces at a time, and then you'll be out of that stuff soon anyways. And then when you feel like you've gotten to your, your weight for a while, then you can go crazy and get yourself some clothes wherever. Right. Yeah, so there you go, Gone Mad. Get it for some inspiration. You'll fit in it eventually. That's, that's good, too. What do you guys got? Any big plans coming up? Any big meals coming up? Or are you just keeping it keeping it the same? Are you are you Steve still being anything? A meal at a time. Yeah. Yeah, I got a chuck roast going right now. Ah. Uh, yeah. Sous vide or? Sous vide, yeah. I got to get. I, I After this, I'm going on Amazon. Do you, have, do you recommend a sous vide machine that I should get? Well, I'm actually shameless plug, an affiliate for Anova Culinary. Is it, is it a good one? Oh yeah, it's it's one of the best. So if I go over to Carnivore today and click in your description, I'll be able to find a link I can click on. You got it. I'm gonna do it. I'm <laughs> gonna. I'm mark my words. I'm doing it right after this call. I'm buying one because I don't really promote any of that stuff. I just put links down there for stuff that I really think are are good products. But uh, yeah, I never promote any of that stuff. I recently tested out the. Uh, I think I was talking to you about this, Adam. The what is it called? The Tasty Air Fryer. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a video coming up soon on it. I really liked it for the price point and the fact that it's got Bluetooth thermometers. But now I'm having second thoughts about it because now I'm more worried about... <sighs> we can't have anything nice as carnivores. These um, uh, forever chemicals that are in a lot of different cooking devices. Probably mm -hmm. in your microwave, probably in your air fryer, probably in that... I'm pretty sure they're in the air fryer that I've used this entire time as a carnivore. Now that I'm learning more about it, trying to steer clear of it. So now I'm having second thoughts about posting this video. It's a tricky thing though, because some people can't like, you got to let people make their own decisions. Like I probably would have decided like, I can't afford like a $400 BPA uh, forever chemical free stainless steel air fryer. So maybe I'm just going to use a hundred dollar one in the meantime to get me over. So I don't know. The tasty air fryer that I tested out that I'm mentioning, it's not forever chemical free. So I feel weird promoting it. However, at its price point, I think it's a really good value. So it's a tricky thing for me. I think it's a really good value because it has the Bluetooth thermometer. 
And so many people screw up their steaks, especially newbies, because they cook to time instead of temperature. Or they have they have an instant read thermometer and they check it too late and it's already overcooked. You get the right. Bluetooth thermometer in this tasty air fryer. You literally press a button on the top. New York strip steak, medium. That's it. It well, literally first of all, dings first of all stop saying the name. Yeah. <laughs> Am I don't, saying it wrong? Don't promote them yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I know. Yeah. I don't even. I don't have any of the links out there or anything yet. But I did. I did. Uh, or they want me to do a comparison video with the Dreo, and it's the Dreo is definitely better. Right. Uh, in terms of build quality and everything, but you know, it's double the price too. So that's my thing. I'm looking at it and I'm like, I, w- I like to purchase stuff that's going to last a lifetime. However, like when I first, like when I first uh, got out of high school and I was buying stuff, I'm like, no, I can't just afford a hundred bucks right now. I can't afford $300. If this thing's going to get me through a couple of years, then I'm going to go with it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm kind of torn on that. Maybe I'll just do the video. And I'll just mention that. I, I would love this a hundred percent more if it was, uh, forever chemical free and there are other things out there that are built better but some of them are three or four times more expensive so anyhow uh it's fun messing around with the technology that's my biggest advice to anyone though that's listening here that's maybe a new carnivore and you're having trouble cooking steak even if you don't get one of these big air fryers or something like that you can get an instant read thermometer for 15 bucks on amazon but even better than that there's there's some uh, bluetooth ones now and the prices are coming down I don't know if you guys have one of those or not, but I love that oh, yeah. Bluetooth thermometer. It literally just yeah, dings yeah. your phone. You, you you put on your phone what you want to cook to. Your phone goes ding. You go take it off. It's perfect every time. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it could be for the cost of uh, a pack of steaks that you end up rooting on the grill. That could be the cost of a Bluetooth thermometer, depending on what type of steaks you're getting or if you're going to Costco like I am. But Yeah, you don't you don't want to ruin a good, perfectly good steak. Oh, there we go. There go. I got the red one of that. This is the Therm- Thermapin one. Um, link, link is, is in my description for these two. These are the top of the line, the best instant read thermometers that you can get. All the top professional chefs and everything use these. And you can, you don't just use it for meat. You can use it for liquids or whatever you, whatever you want to use it for. So Donuts. <laughs> donuts. <laughs> Put some hot donuts. The air fryer, though, I will say has been a lifesaver for me this winter because I was grilling so much out this summer, but man, I use the air fryer literally probably twice a day because I normally make bacon in it too. It makes bacon perfectly. Mm -hmm. Um, And you don't get the big splatter mess and it's easier to clean up sort of thing. So can you avoid the forever chemicals by just putting uh, aluminum foil in it? Or is that just as bad? Or I, I don't know. It might help a little bit. I think the thing is like, um, some of them say the fumes will come off the side of it. Maybe that's to a lesser extent. You get the fumes on the meat and that gives you a little bit. I don't know. I've seen some where they say that the side may have forever chemicals in them, but they'll put them on a stainless steel tray. So I guess, I don't know. It, it, the, the thing that worries me with it is, like they always say, it's the dosage that matters. Maybe you're just getting a minuscule amount and it's not even worth worrying about. But there have been some studies recently where – they say that of all the places you could get forever chemicals from, the air fryers have tested the worst because of the heat component, because you're heating it up. It's usually with the heat. Dr. Barry did a video on forever chemicals too, and he was saying the same thing. If you have hot food in a container, like a plastic container, that's really bad for forever chemicals is when you add the heat to it. So that's the tricky part with it. So I, I think there's um, there's quite a few air. So I bought an air, full disclosure, I bought a new air fryer yesterday on Amazon. I did a bunch of research trying to find one that was as clean as possible, but I think it was like 330 bucks or something like that, where I think the other one I have was maybe half that price, but, um, it looks more like a toaster oven, but it's all stainless steel. So, Mm -hmm. and apparently it's pretty clean. So I'm going to do some more research and I'll, I'll share that one with people. But, uh, I just checked Carrie. I hit 40,000. So thanks for the shout out. There we go. That's a big milestone. Oh, there's top 50. Here we go. We got some comments. You can use parchment paper on an air fryer. That's a good idea. Are, are, do, do, does parchment paper have forever? I got to just stop. I'm going to keep going on forever. I think parchment paper might have forever. Oh, got bubble boy. Right? Well, it's, it's like any. Go outside now. I know. It's, it's going to happen. It's, isn't it crazy? I'm no, I'm like, I never used to care. And now I'm like, we can't have anything nice. Even the water now, I'm looking at getting a reverse osmosis system. I have a 150 foot well here. But those forever chemicals are so nasty. And 
maybe the parchment paper is fine. We're getting a couple comments here. I just remember Dr. Barry saying anything where your food won't stick to it, it probably has forever chemicals in it. He's like, imagine taking a, a hot hamburger and sticking it in a newspaper. It's going to make a mess. It doesn't make a mess in most other things because they probably have forever chemicals in them. But there we go. Nurse Kim said, get unbleached parchment paper. There you go. Cast iron. Yep. I use cast iron all the time now, too. Yeah. The other thing I got, uh, Doctor, shout out Dr. Barry again and Nisha. Uh, I think she uses this cookware, the ceramic frying pans. We were we did some family grocery shopping yesterday and they had this big ceramic frying pan. And I needed a bigger pan because we're all doing carnivore now. Uh, my cast iron skillet's pretty good, but I'm always cooking two things at once. But it's a ceramic one and it's got like no nothing. It's like BPA, forever chemical free. Mm. And I cooked on it yesterday. I seared up some uh, beef stew that I then put in the slow cooker and it had a real nice sear to it. So I think I'm liking it so far. Nice. Well, the cast iron gives you hope that you can go outside now. So Right. <laughs> Carnivore Scott, have any of you looked into harvesting your own sea salt? I have not. But if anyone in this group did, I would say it would be Adam. Yeah. Well, I let Muldon do it for me. Right. <laughs> See, now there's the issue. With, I'm not going to get into the salt now, too. The, the microplastics. And yeah. yeah I, know, I know where you're going with it. Is that crazy? Like, this is the reason, like, I'm going nuts on this stuff, Adam. I know I got to chill. But I'm thankful for it. The girls, Katie said to me yesterday, I think Katie's in the chat. She said, I have learned, and this isn't me teaching her either. I'm not patting myself on the back. But Katie said, I have learned more in the last two weeks than I've learned like the last two years in high school. She keeps going down these uh, carnivore-esque rabbit holes. She did this whole presentation the other day on uh, microplastics. I don't know why or how she got into this, but I'm thankful she's doing it. She like, did this big like PowerPoint presentation. For herself and then she's going to put it on a youtube video but one of the things with the microplastics was the fact that us humans eat a credit card worth of plastic every week every nice. week we're eating nice. a credit card worth of plastic i'm like what and now there's there's studies coming out that it's getting into our arteries and when they're doing autopsies on people that have heart disease or heart attacks they actually have microplastics in their arteries clogging their arteries i thought it was the meat the whole time that's doing it but no it turns out it's the plastic craziness there's no end Carrie. there's no end there's no yeah, end. i mean yeah i mean right now you're breathing in pollen and dust from plants um and whatever carcinogens are in the air you know from right. stuff burning god knows where um should we leave that for healing humanity too yeah three four <laughs> and five you need a separate episode on each one of them the good thing is is our bodies are made so incredibly well that they're able to process a lot of these things and expel expel it out of our bodies. So yeah, the important part is making sure that you're as metabolically healthy as you can by eating a proper human diet. Right. And it, it all ties into the healing humanity because, you know, initially healing humanity was, let's just do a documentary about carnivore diet. And as I've mentioned before, it's kind of evolved quite a bit to, it's more than the carnivore diet. It's returning to what is natural for humans. And eating a credit card's worth of plastic in a week or, or ingesting cancer-causing glyphosate and pesticides is pretty far from natural. So it all mm -hmm. ties in. But, yeah, Adam's right. No matter what you do, glyphosate overspray. I could go outside and get a big drink of glyphosate. It comes down in the rain now. It's in most water systems. It's basically everywhere. Luckily, like Adam said, we our bodies are pretty good at getting rid of most of it. Although those forever chemicals are trickier. It take a long time. I'm telling you, healing humanity, too. We can only do the best that we can do. I think we're, I think we're doing, I think all of us here are doing the best we can do given the circumstances. There we go. Control what you can control. There you go. Let's go, Andy. Exactly. Adam, I also think our microbiome will evolve. We'll get bacteria that eat the plastic. Eventually they evolve fast. Yeah. There's, hey, there's, there's a actually a fungus that does that, I think. Right. And we got Lynn Tucker Carnivore, another friend of the channel. Shout out, Lynn. Lynn. Awesome. Hey, I can't believe it's already been an hour already. Sorry that I went on ranting and raving about Cheerios for 55 minutes. Dude, Barry Allen is in the chat. Oh, the, hey. The Flash is here. Barry Allen. Right. Yes. Shout out, Barry Allen. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you guys so much. Shout out, Adam Carnivore Today, Healing Humanity Movie, JT, Poco thank Moonshine you, Family. Homestead How? Yeah, humanity movie. What else we got going on? You guys got any other things you want to shout out quick? I know JT and I got 
raise the stakes on Friday. We got the big meetup. Everyone got to come to the meet meetup in Thienesville. Adam, you got any big videos coming up? I got a video coming out Friday with a lady that healed over 20 health conditions. So that's uh, that's absolutely incredible. Um, can't wait to release that one. And uh, she's already got her story out there. But, you know, I got to learn firsthand from her, her story and her journey. And it's so incredibly inspiring. And, uh, yeah, that one's coming out on Friday. That's awesome. Check out Carnivore today for that. It's, it's getting hard to keep up with all these Carnivore stories that need to be told legitimately there's so many of them it's amazing absolutely amazing and more and more every single day so good stuff awesome thanks guys jt adam uh thank you everyone for super chats memberships and joining we really appreciate y'all have everyone. a good day Beep. Beep.